Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris is back for some more Hearthstone Arena action. I'm on vacation from Hunter and Paladins, so we're gonna grab Shaman, my best and favorite class, and see what we can do. Well, the arena is throwing us a bit of a curveball here, is starting off with a junk rare. I wouldn't say this, these are trash rares, mind you. Uh, but certainly when you consider that you can get things like Twilight Drakes, Knife Jugglers, Argent Commanders in this slot, and to have something that pretty much does nothing whatsoever in its stead, it's a bit disappointing. Oh, man, I just don't like the Demolisher. I'm sorry, I just don't like it. We're going to take the Mind Control tech. Uh, hmm. Frost Elemental is nice, certainly, but we'll take the Earth and Ring Farseer. I think they're both, like, decent, but not the greatest for their mana cost, and the Earth and Ring Farseer provides an early body and some healing, which could be nice against the aggro decks that we're seeing so much of these days. Ogre Maga, I never really liked that card. We'll take a Loot Hoarder here for some card draw. And it's interesting, I'm, I'm tempted by the Worgen, because it is one of the few playable one-drops, but we'll take the Harvest Golem. It's about as good as three drops ever get. Ah, here all the good rares are in one place, of course. I would take any one of these in a heartbeat over this mind control tech. It's a bit sad that these things weren't split up quite so much. We'll take the Defender of Argus here for the plus one, plus one, uh, and Taunt. It's really nice, actually, because you're going to have those totems on the field, so the Defender of Argus may not always have a great target, but it should always have a target. Hmm, okay. So here we're spiking at three mana a little bit. Let's go ahead and get a good five mana creature here. The Silverhand Knight is quite lovely. Oh gosh, I don't like any of this stuff. I guess we'll take a Leper Gnome. I, don't, I really just don't like this Panther. I don't want another 3-drop that I'm not thrilled with when I already have 3 things I could play on turn 3. And yeah, I'm not going to be holding on to Mind Control tech hoping for the dream. So we'll take a Leper Gnome to have some turn 1 plays in this deck. Oh Jesus! Well, you know what's actually been impressing me? The Murloc Tidehunter. It's actually been really annoying to deal with when people have played it against me. It seems like every time I play it, my opponent drops a Whirlwind or a Cleave or something. I guess I'm biased because I keep playing it against Warriors, but we'll, we'll grab it here. It's, it's been good against me, so I'm going to take it myself. Stormpike Commando is a pain in the ass uh, sometimes. I am a bit low on removal. I haven't really seen any removal at all here, have I? Uh, I, I just don't think this card is... Man, I don't know. I'll take the No Motion Venture. Gotta trust my instincts here. I don't want to take Mediocre 5 drops, so uh, we'll, we'll take that card here. Ooh, okay, again, good rares all in one place. Wild Pyromancer is not that great, it's just a playable 2 mana, but uh, Lightning Storm is very important for Shamans. Not just because it's an aggro meta, but because it's really the only um, global removal spell that Shamans have. Okay, this guy is a nifty battle cry. It actually works quite well with totems. Do I take it over the Scarlet Crusader? Well, I've still got just the 3-3 three, three drops here. Scarlet Crusader has been really good against me, but whenever I play it, it sucks. It's, it's quite annoying and, and irritating. I'm just going to take the Abusive Sergeant here. It's a good battle cry, so even if I'm not playing it on turn 1, I think it's a solid card to have. Okay, here I get to take another Frost Elemental. I'm going to take Fairy Dragon, though. It's very nice. Uh, it gives you some early plays, and it also can't be targeted, of course, so that's good. The Wolf was tempting, but I just think it's quite as good. Man, I just can't see any late-game cards except for Frost Elemental, apparently, and this Panther has come up like 15 times. I'm going to take the Warden. I do, I do think that's a reasonable card. Hmm, so I could take the Wind Fury Harpy to make sure I have some late game creatures, but the Unbound Elemental is like a premier 3 drop, so I'm going to take it. It's a bit risky. I acknowledge there's a risk to, to doing this, but I think it's important to have that because it's just so good. Flame Tongue Totem is a no-brainer. That's a good one to have. Ah, uh, man. So these are both tempting cards here, the card draw and the imps. I currently don't, don't have any card draw other than the Fairy Dragon and the No Mission Venture, but that is actually a non-zero amount, so I'm not... That bothered. I'm going to take the Twilight Drake. Let's make sure we get some good 4-drops here. If we're not getting any late game, at least we'll get some mid game. Ah, Fire Elemental. I still am on the policy of taking every one of those that I see. Chillwind Yeti is great, but I have, like, no removal other than that Fire Elemental that I just took and the Lightning Storm. So we have to take the Lightning Bolt here. It's just, there's just no question about it. Okay, here we'll take a Wind Fury Harpy for some late, more late game. Hmm... Well, the Imp Master is interesting, but I think the Cobra is nice. I don't have any removal, so I, th I think I need to be able to have answers. Dark Iron Dwarf, of course, is great with your totems. That's a, that's a good one. And I don't want to take Wind Fury Harpy number two, and I am so low on removal. The Stormforged Axe is nice. This could actually, like, go the distance and kill three things, potentially, against some decks. The problem with it is if your opponent starts playing three toughness creatures, then you're, you're going to end up getting a little bit less value out of it. But if your opponent plays lots of aggro junk... This could really be amazing. Fork Lightning, need, I need it. I still need removal. Finally, the removal starting to come through for us. This is like Wind Fury Harpy number 15 here. What do we have? We have not much endgame. I really want a 5-mana drop, like, say, a Ventrico Mercenary. This isn't exactly what I need. 
but I just need late game creatures. I need to have more than three. I think I need to have more than three late game creatures. So we're going to take the win for your harpy here. Ah, speak and you shall receive or something along those lines. That's great. We do need that. Now, do I want this Cobalt Jume answer? The answer is, I mean, the Dire Wolf Alpha continues to underwhelm me. Sometimes the buff is really great. That's true. If you can, like, drop it down onto other stuff. But the spell damage can actually be really great for Lightning Storm and for um, Forked Lightning. I'm going to take it just to have another source of spell damage in the deck. This is Quasi Removal, so I'm going to pick it up. Ah, okay. So I think I'll take a Cult Master here. My curve, as you saw, ended up being quite heavily centered around 2 and 3. That still doesn't mean I'm going to be playing the Cult Master on turn 4 most of the time. But I think I'm going to grab it to have some card draw potential. Ah, uh, the Frost Elemental. Well, let's see. I already have 1, 2, 3, 6 drops. 5 creatures total at 5 mana or more. I think that's actually fine. We'll just take some more Quasi Removal with that Wolf Rider here. Okay, Ancestral Spirit. So actually, in the comments, someone was telling me that... Um, they, they like this card a lot, and I should give it some more credit. I just, I've just never seen it impress me. I don't have enough taunt in this deck to make it worthwhile either. So we're going to go ahead and grab the Wild Pyromancer, although there was that one pack where it was like Violet Teacher Defender of Argus and Knife Juggler or something, and uh, like any one of those three would have been better than like two of the other rare picks I got. So no epics in this draft, which is sad because Shamans do have some good ones. Um, no legendaries, but if, and, and not that much removal. So this is actually, I would say, below, definitely below average, decidedly below average for a shaman deck. So we'll see how it goes. Krong the Paladin. I will fight with honor well, for this is tricky. I definitely don't want to keep the Cult Master or the Fire Elemental. And I, you know, I don't even want to keep the Flame Tongue Totem. There's just too much of a risk that he'll play an early drop. My totems get crushed, and this Flame Tongue Totem will be a dead card in my hand. So everything has to go back here. Hopefully we'll get some of our drops. I mean, we have lots of drops. There we go, there we go, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, the issue is that my drops here are maybe not the greatest against a Paladin, in light of the fact that his 1-1 recruits can kill all this stuff, but that's okay. Uh, we'll still get to do some stuff before pooping out. The Twilight Drake is actually going to be kind of unimpressive here. I could have taken something decent over this. Maybe I should have. Ah, well, he's going to use a coin and his two drop to trade against my one drop. That's fine. Especially considering that his recruits could have traded into that eventually anyway. I'm all right with that. So I'm going to play this rather than the loot hoarder. And the reason for that is this, first of all, puts more power and more toughness onto the board. And second of all, if he makes a recruit, I don't actually mind using the scout to pick off the recruit, leaving me with a 2-1 still on the board. Uh, that will also allow me to play the loot hoarder next turn and kind of protect it. Cobalt Geomancer. I don't think it's time yet to play that. We'll pick this off. Swing. Swing. Not swing. Swing play. And pass the turn. So no coin. That means he's not getting an early four drop. Coin is really great for paladins, I think. I mean, it's great for everybody, but it's really great for paladins because they want to get to turn four so desperately that being able to do that consistently is important. Ah. Well, crap. That's actually very irritating. Uh, hmm. Dark Iron Dwarf just actually doesn't even really help me here. Hmm. This would be a 4-4, which is rather unimpressive. Flame Tongue doesn't actually help me. I don't need I don't need a boost to spell damage. Uh, yeah, I guess, do I play this as a 4-4 just before it gets any worse? I don't think, like, making a totem and passing is, is the correct move at all here. Okay, what I'm going to do is kill off the creature and draw a card. Maybe I'll get a better play. Lightning Storm is not exactly a better play, sadly. But, oh, wait a minute! Oh my gosh, I'm so silly, of course! Loot Hoarder draw a card, Twilight Drake is a Chilliwind Yeti. Perfect. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually pop the Divine Shield, and the reason I'm doing that is, if he has any sort of buffs, I want this thing to just die. Like, a Blessing of Kings, this will actually survive against the Twilight Drake, but I wanted to actually take the damage from running into the Twilight Drake, rather than uh, just popping the Divine Shield. All right, he's got more Divine Shield action here, so the two of these will get to kill the Twilight Drake, unfortunately. Unless I'm lucky and flip a Healing Totem, but I'm not going to count on that. Well, might as well try. Let's see what we get. Taunt or Healing would be good. I got it. Okay, perfect. So, I don't want to play this or this, because <laughs> they'll just die. I can't play the Dark Iron Dwarf. Ah, this is annoying. A Taunt would have been good, so I could play the Flame Tongue Totem. I can't just play this and let it die, though. And this letting it die would be kind of sucky as well. Hmm. I could lightning bolt to pop the divine shield. Ah, man, it sucks. This this is actually was really good for him here with my hand. I needed like an earth shock or something. I 
Well, the master is actually pretty good to see because what it means is that Lightning Storm will be able to clear the board. He's going to kill off my healing totem to keep the divine shield on. Fair enough. Defender of Argus. Hmm. Is that worth it? It would allow me to like to play the flame tongue totem and then guard it behind the Twilight Drake. Hmm. I think we'll try that. A bit risky for sure, but my seal for Argus. gotta take risks in this game. So we've got three, four, five. He can definitely well three, four, five. He can definitely kill off this Twilight Drake, but then he won't have enough power to kill this unless he has a true super champion or of course a hammer of wrath. Um, I'm actually gonna hit him because seven is a lot of damage. And I have a Lightning Storm to clear everything out. I have actually Cobalt Geomancer and Lightning Storm, so once this Divine Shield is popped, this is guaranteed to die to the Lightning Storm, and so is all this other stuff. So this is why Lightning Storm is so important. I don't think I'm, like, teaching anything to anybody. I don't think there's anyone watching this who's like, oh, Lightning Storm is a good card. I guess I should take it. But just in case, you know, Lightning Storm, I think for Shamans, is like a must-pick rare. Unless you, like, already have three of them or something, you know? It's a must-pick rare because it's just so important to have at least one source of global removal in your deck to give yourself an out uh, against situations like this one so at the so uh the obvious thing here is pop divine shield use the imp use the recruit to kill off the twilight drake if he has something better than that then that would be very unfortunate for me Not are you god jesus with these divine shields honestly honestly enough is enough people enough is enough all right uh hmm. Well, if I want this Flame Tongue Totem to live, it's going to be very difficult, because I'd have to throw away the Defender of Argus on this and use a Lightning Storm. I could now throw away the Defender of Argus on this and use the Fire Elemental. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Um, I think 5 damage is still a lot of damage. We'll hold on to the Fire Elemental for now. Because what I really want to do is, first of all, send that guy for 5 damage. My opponent's getting a bit low on health. I want to make a totem. I make it lucky and flip a taunt. I don't, sadly. But what I can do is actually play the Stark Iron Dwarf here and buff my uh, Flame Tongue totem. So that way, at least the Divine Shield's going to pop if he wants to kill the the Flame Tongue. And if he kills it with other means, then he's going to have to uh, you know, work for it. So uh, I think that's one case where buffing on your turn is a pretty decent idea. Roman Champion? Uh, okay, that's a bit scary because it does not actually die to Lightning Storm, of course. And it allows the Divine Shield to pop against my Dark Iron Dwarf, which is extremely irritating. Mm. And now this guy might actually survive against Lightning Storm. It's a 50-50 coin flip, even with boosted by spell damage. Oh, that's so irritating. Well, he had a really good card there, and this fucking Divine Shield stuff is really frustrating. So what he did was he left my... Oh, no, he's going to go ahead and finish it off, even though it means sacrificing an imp. Okay. Well, much as it pains me to do this, I need to take care of this Stormwind Champion. So, the reason I say this pains me is that he can kill this off very easily now. He's, well, not very easily. He's got, you know, he's got, he's got it on the board, basically. The five damage he needs to kill this off. Which, which is kind of sad. And, of course, if he's a True Silver Champion or a Hammer of Wrath, he can do even better than that. God, I'm getting so annoyed by those Divine Shields. Whenever I play Paladin, it doesn't ever seem to be quite that impressive. Alright, so this is... Well, it means he gets to keep the Imp Master. He should have played this first, because it's card drawn. It might have given him a better way of taking out the Fire Elemental. And he flipped, he fingered his card. Maybe he's just looking at it, or maybe he's regretting that he didn't draw cards first. So now he throws that away, he throws the Imp away. Okay, is this the time for the Lightning Storm? Well, I think I'll draw a card first with this. We'll see, we'll see what I get. And then I can always Lightning Storm next turn. Wolf Rider, okay. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Draw a card, see what we get. Magical Mercenary, that'll be nice. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and Wolf Ride. And I'm going to actually um, get my opponent down, because I feel like I'm behind in this game, and when you're behind, you should you should try to race. So yes, of course, now the 1-1 gets to kill the Wolf Rider, but I know that I'm holding the, the kill in my hand with this Lightning Storm here, so I don't really mind that the Shattered Sun Cleric gets to live. No, God damn it! Ah, Jesus, that's terrible. Uh, I might lose this game now. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna clear out my stuff, which is smart. So Lightning Storm doesn't really address this problem very well. Cult Master, hmm. Well, 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see what I get for totems. The one one, that's actually decent. It'll deal some damage. And we're gonna just play the Ventral Mercenary. So he has to deal with this. He can't let it hit him. He has ways to deal with it, of course. He's got three, four, five. So he'll actually need to throw this guy away to kill it, barring any sort of buffs. Hammer of Wrath. Ah, it's unfortunate. So now the Shattered Sun Cleric will finish this thing off. Maybe I should have lightning stormed. I don't know. It's hard to say. I am the blade. He's got a lot. He had some early game, but he also had a lot of end game as well. Damn it! Ah, I'm gonna lose this game. I just don't see myself coming back. I don't have quite enough juice in this deck to finish the to finish it off. Well, I have no choice here. I have to play Lightning Storm. Spell Power Totem would be great. I don't get it. So it's a coin flip now whether the Priestess dies, and my chances of survival hinge on that coin flip. I win the coin flip. All right. Well, <sighs> this is not looking good. Although maybe if he only kills off. If he, if, he, if he chooses to hit Mira, then killing my creatures. Damn it! Ah, I was really hoping this could live so I could use the Cult Master. Oh, man. Lost Elemental. Jesus Christ, this guy has so much late game. Clearly he hasn't gotten the memo that aggro is the new normal. Damn, he has so much late game. It's a, it's a, he's played like like four different creatures that are like six mana or more. Yeah, I just, my, my deck... Well, my deck just doesn't have the juice to hold up against that sort of thing. So we'll do our best here. Hopefully, in order to kill this, he's going to have to give me a card. Oh, well, I call it Master, but I'm behind on cards, behind on the board, and I'm not really ahead on life either because of the stupid Justice guy. Damn it! He had so much late game, it's insane. I, I, don't, think I, I don't think there's any way that I could win. Not with him having all the tricks, and not with him having as much late game as he did. Plus, of course, removal. God, Jesus Christ. Ugh. This is this paladin really geared up for the end game. I, I I'm kind of I'm kind of getting very bitter now. I'm like hoping he meets like aggro decks and like smack gets smashed up in the arena. I know it's very petty of me, but <laughs> that that is that is that is that is my thought process. So yeah, I'm just being completely overrun. He's gonna give me a card. Stoneforge Dax. could help a little bit, I suppose. Fork lightning. Well, let's go ahead and drop this axe. We'll kill off his biggest threat. Uh, I'll flip a spell power to oh, hopefully flip a spell power totem. We do, all right, fork lightning. Kill stuff that would have died anyway, all right, great. Um, Yeah, we'll just go ahead and keep on swinging for him. It's really the only hope that we have here. It's a very slim one at that. I don't have any like lava bursts. I only have the one lightning bolt, only the one fire elemental. I think there's another wolf rider in here. Ah, that's nice. He actually can get me down to one health here. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, at this point, he doesn't even need to kill my creatures. I mean, he, could, he probably should, but with one card, it's unlikely that I can deal that much damage. Yeah. Playing it safe. Although he's giving me a card for that. Not sure why he did that. Should have just killed my Cult Master first. Okay, Wild Pyromancer is not super great. Uh, I mean, this is a 9-9. <laughs> I can't, I can't kill it. Alright, well, hopefully he meets aggro decks from now until the end of tomorrow. Nothing but aggro decks and gets smashed to pieces. That, that is what I'm hoping for there, because I am a bitter, petty man. So this Shaman run, it is, as like I said, a below average deck. A little, still a little bit sad uh, that, um... We start off with such a horrible loss. But, uh, who knows? Maybe now we'll be in the loser's bracket and we'll um, play some easier opponents. I think this deck is better than the warrior deck I played with yesterday. The one that had no fiery war axes, no Arathi weaponsmiths. Um, <laughs> and then we all know how that one ended. It was kind of interesting. I, I would recommend that run if you haven't watched it to go check it out. Okay, you know, maybe in that game, maybe I could have made a slightly better move. Maybe I could have Lightning Stormed earlier. I, here's the th reason why I didn't Lightning Storm. I really felt like he was a Paladin. He had some early drops. I felt like he was playing an aggro deck. So I was waiting for him to play more junk creatures and smash the shit out of that stupid aggro stuff. But then he just kept playing nothing but endgame cards. And he had so many endgame cards that it's very, very clear he actually had not drafted an aggro deck. He drafted like a, a late game sort of deck and it really paid off for him. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. 
Okay. Well, do I kill this or do I play a Kobold Geomancer and then coin and kill it? Let's go ahead and um, hold on to that Geomancer. So, unfortunately, now I am overloaded next turn. All I'll be able to do is either play this or make a totem. But I would like to hold on to this in case I see my Lightning Storm. It would be nice to have it in my back pocket. Although, granted, oh yeah, Fourth Lightning is also very good with this. So there's two reasons in, the, in this deck for me to hold on to that. So what I'm going to do here, then, is coin out uh, the... Earthen Ring Farseer, and you might wonder why I'm doing that rather than the Unman Elemental. The reason is quite simply this this kills the River Crocolisk, so I'm willing to waste the Battle Cry. Because uh, even though this is the better card in the abstract, it doesn't kill this, t t take my opponent's creature off the board. So she had a very aggressive start, so this might definitely be an. Well, this not. Might definitely. This might very well be an aggro player. She had a very, very fast start here. Alright, uh, no continuation, which is very good. We'll play our Warden. This guy has a little bit more teeth to him than might first appear, because I will just play the Dark Iron Dwarf next turn and buff it up to be a 3-7, which is quite impressive. Okay, good. No Stampeding Kodos, which is nice. Unfortunately, this can't be killed by the Mogushin Warden, even after the buff. Mirror Image. Well, so that's a little bit interesting. Now, at least, well, thanks to the Dark Iron Dwarf, I can actually pop one of these right away. I could, of course, play the Golem and the Unbound Elemental as well. But even though this doesn't use up all my mana, I think it's important to clear out one of these as soon as possible. So next turn, um, I can actually kill, kill what she has on the board and then play Wind Fury Harpy, which is a bit of a threat. It survives Flame Strike, so does this. This guy will die, but I'm pretty foolproof to Flame Strike. She's going to need to fling, sling around some Fireballs and Polymorphs to take care of business. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Ghost Rider 77. Alright, what you got for me? So the thing is, I definitely could have taken more endgame cards. Like, a previous life, my deck would have had some one of those Frost Elementals that I kept passing by. And I might have then had a chance against that Paladin. The frost wolves stand ready. Hmm, so he's got a 6-6, six, six, which is actually quite serious. And it's a very canny move by my opponent here, dealing damage to the Warden, so now the 6-6 six, six can finish it off. Well, um, maybe the Wind Fury Harpy is not the greatest thing to play here. Uh, another consideration is to play the Cult Master so that when this thing dies, at least I get to draw a card. And what I'm going to do is, since the Frost Wolf Warlord has to run in here anyway, I'm going to do this. Now there's a risk, of course, which is that she has a Frost Bolt. She has a Frost Bolt and can kill this, then the Frost Wolf Warlord will get to munch on some Dwarf for dinner. But we're going to go for it here. I'm going to play this, and I'll make a totem as well. Taunt would be the luckiest. This is... Um, actually, this is actually not irrelevant. It means that if she has a Frost Bolt, she has to use it and Hero Ability to clear the sky away. Actually, if she has Frost Bolt, she probably should use it on the Cult Master to stop me from trying cards. Oh, crap. Everything dies to Flame Strike now. Ah, Jesus. That was, that was silly. Oh, my God. I have no answers to this. Well, that's definitely not as bad as a Flame Strike would have been, so I'm not going to complain too much. She puts a 5 Toughness creature down, which is extremely irritating, and of course kills off the Cult Master. I need my Fire Elemental here really, really badly. Really, really badly. So I can kill this thing off. Ember Cobra is not going to do it for me here, unfortunately. Well, we need to clear out this Taunter, so let's do this. And that. We'll play the Cobra here. Um, and let's also... I don't want to play this because it just dies. She, you know, if she had a Flame Strike, she would have used it. So I am going to overextend against Flame Strike. Just know that I am doing this consciously. So now the Healing Totem is nice. It means that Hero Ability can't finish off these dudes. And I've got a number of different things on the board that can wrap up the Frost Wolf Warlord. Although I did incur a card at disadvantage because he got to kill the Call Master. And then is also going to suck up another card. Uh-oh, this is the card she just fingered. Oh, God. Whew. I was worried that was Flame Strike, although this is actually unfortunate, because she's going to get to draw some cards. So she's going to freeze the Cobra, which is smart. Stop it from getting rid of the Auctioneer. I hope she has no more cards. Thank goodness. So she got one card off of this guy, so it's no better than a Twilight Drake at the moment. And she should use the Owl to kill off the Dark Iron Dwarf to save... Oh, no! She killed the wrong target. I guess she was afraid of this ability, but she should have really killed off the Dark Iron Dwarf. Ah, so I see now. Never mind. What she did was she wanted to make sure the Auctioneer lived. That's what she did. 
I see. And the auctioneer is going to live because my cobra is frozen, which sucks. We're going to go ahead and drop a threat, though. Still going to hold on to this Geomancer, especially now that I've drawn the Forked Lightning. I really want to make sure that I don't play this until I get some use out of it. Because making this deal 3 damage to random enemy minions is a huge, huge difference. So she's going to draw 3 cards off of that because this guy got to live. So now my opponent is potentially just going to win on pure card advantage. <sighs> this does deal 8 damage, so if it miraculously survives the turn... Oh, God damn it! Well, I mean, you got to expect a mage who's allowed to untap with this thing. It's going to draw lots of spells. Good strategic decision by my opponent, though. Let it, like, making sure that this lived. Some other people might have made made a focus to try to keep the Frost Elm, the, the frost Wolf Warlord around. She got so many cards out of this, I'm just going to lose the game because of that. Uh, she's going to ping that. Is she actually going to trade this guy in for it? Well, it's better than that thing dying to flame strike, I suppose. I guess it was going to get healed, though, so I was fine. Alright, so my opponent has six cards to my five. I guess it's not actually that terrible. It could definitely be worse. Mind control tech is not really what I need. We're just going to populate the board. And this Mogashan Warden is a real battle-scarred veteran here. <laughs> and we're going to swing. So, uh, yeah. Not really doing too much damage. This Warden was all I had for damage this whole game, and she had the silence for it. And she drew an ass-ton of cards with the Auctioneer. And it's not... I mean, I only deal, like, after she pings this off, like, five damage. With her at 27, it's really not enough. I'm holding on to too much trash. So we'll see what she's got. What to do? She's drawn through two thirds of her deck, so a flame strike at pretty much any point will just win her the game. I know there's got to be a flame strike in here. Blizzard will also do it. Ah, she's gonna play that guy. I assume she has a secret to follow it up. Yes, she does. Shields up. And she's gonna give it to Mon. Well, that's cute. Hmm. So the risk is that Forked Lightning might not actually hit this thing, which would suck a lot of dongs. But that's the risk I have to take now. I just can't afford to wait any longer. I was really hoping she was she would play a fourth creature so that mind control tech would actually be useful. Alas, it was not to be. Okay. Well, I have to I have to kill this guy this turn no matter what the cost. So, um, let's see. We're going to play the Twilight Drake first, I think. Then the Geomancer. And then, well, then I have to pray that I hit the thing. Actually, let's act... Oh, I can't make a totem. Right. Well, no matter what, I'm going to be running this thing into it. So let's do Let's make a totem. See if we can get a spell damage totem. We don't. And hope that I don't whiff. Whew. Thank goodness. Okay, so I didn't whiff. That's good. Um, This guy's done his duty. We'll use him to finish that off. And we'll use the golem to check for a secret. Job done. Ice berry. Alright, well, that means she has an insane amount of life. And we're getting really low here, so she's unless she was an unlucky mage who never saw a flame strike in her draft, she's God oh, Jesus Christ, she's gonna get it at some point soon here, and then I'm gonna be in trouble. I just don't have the, enough end game to support uh, playing around flame strike. Ma mages are very strong against me in this particular draft. The gates are open. Lord of the Arena, that's a pretty difficult threat to deal with. Still can't use Mind Control attack. Arcane Missiles, that's just a crapshoot, I suppose. That accomplished pretty much nothing, because this guy will get healed up, and she doesn't have enough mana to finish it off right now. Well, Wind Fury Harpy, that's the only late game I've got. Um, I have to clear this out. I just have to clear this out. <laughs> I just don't have a choice in the matter. Let's see what totem I get. That? Okay. Well... Throwing this away is sad because it survives flame strike. I'd like to keep the guy with the health. So, we'll do this. Um, well, well, I want to keep this around too, just in case. Actually, no. Let's actually just use it. If I get flame strike, I'm screwed no matter what. Um, we'll go ahead and trade off the creature because it's going to die to a flame strike anyway. So I have two creatures to survive that survive flame strike. Which means that, you know, if she uses Flame Strike, she can finish off the Wind Fury Harpy, but this thing will, will stick around. And how much that will matter when her with her having this many cards is hard to say. She's going to polymorph that. Okay. Did I ever take a second Wind Fury Harpy? I can't remember. I don't think I did. Arcane Explosion. Oh, she has the Explosion. That's a bit disconcerting. And now my Healing Totem is going to bite it. Hmm. So this thing is going to be a, a very depressing 4 health. 
Oh, God. Well, that thing is very bad here. I don't want to play this because because there's a small chance that if she has a flame strike now that I'll still live. There's a small, small, small chance. Tiny chance. If I play this, though, and she has flame strike, then I'm guaranteed to lose. So I'd rather just not, you know, automatically lose to a flame strike. All right, no flame strike. That's that's a good that's a piece of good news. Cobra. Ah, that's going to kill off my unbent elemental unless I draw fire elemental or a wolf rider. I think I have a couple of wolf riders in here that will take this out as well. Well, uh, that's actually good enough. Whew, glad I drafted that card. Still gonna hang on to this, because again, I don't want to auto-lose to Flame Strike. That is not what I needed. I really wanted a Healing Totem. So that this thing would have at least forced her to use Hero Ability to kill it off after the inevitable Flame Strike. She's got only five cards left. I mean, I'm at full health. If she doesn't have a Flame... Like, if she didn't ever see a Flame Strike in her draft, which is a very slim hope, I might actually be able to just win off of... Um, you know, fatigue. If she, if, she, if she literally can't deal 28 damage to me with the seven cards that she has left in the game, plus the secret, then um, I could, I could win. If, I hope this is another ice barrier or something, because I don't want it to be mirror energy. I don't want her to get any more creatures. She's going to silence that. Ah, okay. Well, that's interesting. She's got a couple of secrets there. So obviously it's tempting to use the 1-1 one, one to kill off the owl, but what about this secret back here? I kind of want to test for that. So I'm actually going to test for the secret rather than killing the owl. Because, yeah, Vaporize It's a pretty good one to get out of the way. Healing Totem! She got a uh, Taunt Totem. Actually, well, I'll see what this other secret is. Well, no, 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 wait, wait. Always check for Mirror Entity first. Check for Mirror Entity first. Ah, yes! I finally learned the lesson. See, you've, you've watched me learn and improve. I checked for Mirror Entity first, so I get to kill that thing. It's a bit sad now because the hero ability finishes this thing off, but I'd still rather do that and trade creatures at this point than um, have her just keep creatures around. Because at this moment, I'm, I'm banking on fatigue being the win. That is going to be very difficult for me to kill. Uh, even Fire Elemental is not quite going to do it. Damn it. I can deal 3, 4, 5 damage. It's not enough. Okay, what we have to do here is make a totem first. Healing Totem, okay. We'll play Defender of Argus like this. So what I'm gonna do here is kill that off. Swing this. I'm still not gonna play this, even though there's no chance of it actually being usable, because I do wanna have another creature around in case she plays a Flame Strike. So I mean, she, I figure she has to have one. It's just at the bottom of her deck. Or maybe she never saw one in the whole draft. That's possible as well. So, it's going to take some damage. Now, the Defender of Argus can finish this off. This. Ah, she has more late-game stuff. Well, this thing doesn't hit very hard. She'll lose to Fatigue before this thing can finish me off. Now, three cards, as far as I'm concerned, is all the cards in the world. This plus three cards could very well kill me, but I still have a Fire Elemental in here. Lightning Storm is also very good. And I'm actually just going to use the Lightning Storm, because it's guaranteed to kill off the Boulder Fist Ogre. So, I lost the coin flip against that. We'll flip a Totem. Taunt, that's good. We'll keep on swinging. So now she has to uh, run in. I assume she's going to want to kill off the Wrath of Air Totem, but that'll take another point of damage. Mirror Image. Ah, okay. That actually could make this potentially fire. It's unlikely, but less unlikely than it was before. Okay, so I have this Taunt Totem holding up the Archmage. There's two cards left in her deck. No Mission Hunter. I will totally draw a card. Absolutely gonna draw a card here. Loot Hoarder. Uh, if this dies, I get to draw a card, so that's totally fine. Will... Okay. Do I kill off one of these mirror images? Um... I'm gonna... I'm gonna try a mind game. I'm gonna say, oops, like I forgot to attack with my guy. And see if she plays another creature. Well, she did, so I get to steal one of her creatures, which is funny. Actually, she would have to, she needed to kill two of my creatures so that I would actually have room, and she obliged me. Actually, no, she only needed to kill one creature for me to have room, so we're gonna go ahead and mind control tech, see what we get. She only has one card left in her deck, so I guess she really did just, um, never see a flame strike in her draft, unless she was god awful unlucky and the flame strike was at the bottom of the deck. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill her creature, because basically there's, there's literally a zero chance that with one card she can kill me. 
Jesus. Even if it is a flame strike and everything dies, she's going to get fatigued out. Well, that was <laughs> quite the protracted battle. Well Given that I was up against a mage who never drafted a flame strike, or unless it was that... Oh no, I want to say well played! Whew. Un unless uh, that unless that, that flame strike was the final card of her deck, the entire reason that I won that game was because she never saw a flame strike in her draft. Otherwise, of course, I would have lost. All right, well, that is it then uh, for the first two games. We're going to come back soon and see the rest of the arena, so stick around if you want to see it. And if you like this video, please like and or subscribe, and I'll look forward to seeing you in just a little bit. Till then.